Well, I always liked photographing boxing. I, I found boxing to be uh, a sport. One, I liked the people. I mean, uh, believe it or not, the nicest athletes in sport were boxing, boxers, and hockey players. And I mean, in both instances, you were dealing with, with pretty uneducated guys, certainly when I was shooting. But they just were, they were always gentlemen. You brought a lady into the boxing gym and the language changed dramatically. Uh, more important, they were just always so cooperative. Every time a fighter throws a punch, there's a potential picture. Football, the same thing. I love photographing football, both college and pro, because every time the ball is snapped, there's a potential picture. Unlike Walter, who is very, very good, a great baseball photographer, I'd fall asleep at baseball games. Nothing happens. You get a good pitchers duel, and how do you make good pictures when nothing is happening? Well, Walter found a way to do that. I found a way to just fall asleep, you know. But it's easy when you get a smashing play at home plate, or when you get the second baseman of the shortstop jumping over, uh, sliding run at a completed double play. But other than those things, You've shot a couple of rolls of the pitcher, and some of the pitches have deliveries that aren't particularly photogenic. You get a guy like Juan Marichal, who kicked his foot over his head when he pitched. That made good pictures. But after an inning or two, you've got every picture you could possibly want of Juan Marichal. What do you do when you get a good pitcher's duel? So I found baseball the hardest, boxing uh, and pro football probably my two favorite. I liked photographing horse racing a lot. Certainly I love the Kentucky Derby. Well, there were, there were actually four or five photographers that I just admired as a, as a, young, as a young man. I admired the same way so many uh, young sports fans admire the athletes. Uh, John Zimmerman, High Peskin, Marvin Newman, George Silk, and Mark Kaufman. They were the three big stars at Sports Illustrated. Mark was a Life Magazine photographer, and John did everything. And I mean, I just... I, I thought they all walked on water, and uh, I can't say they mentored me, but I studied them very carefully. And uh, you know, and then one of the great joys of my life is I actually got to work with them and, and compete with them, if you want to say. I, you know, I don't know. It's such a different business today. I mean, first off, today I think a sports photographer uh, can worry a lot less about getting good action pictures than we did. I mean, believe it or not, when I was shooting, the two things I worried about, and I was quite good technically, but you worried big time about your exposure. It was not unusual for a photographer to have two or three light meters uh, because you never believed one. And the latitude on film was so limited, uh, certainly on the good quality films, Kodachrome or any of the, any of the lower ASA films, you had so little latitude on uh, that uh, to, get, to get a picture published in the magazine, if you, were, if you were more than a quarter of a stop off, often they just would throw it out. So I worried about my exposure and I really worried about focus. There was an eye-hand coordination on long lenses. Uh, I mean, I always tell people that Walter, young Walter Yos, had the best eye-hand coordination I've ever seen. I, you know, I, you were never sure. And of course, you didn't have the digital screen in the back to check it, so you had instant gratification and you knew that you were pretty close at least. You can't really tell with the digital. I think a young photographer today doesn't have to. A young photographer today can simply concentrate on taking good pictures. The cameras are pretty foolproof. Uh, the autofocus works, and the exposures on the light metering systems are just so crack on these days. And even when they're off, the latitude of the digital systems is so much better that uh, it's taken two of the big worries, at least certainly my worries, out of the out of, out of the out of the equation. I collect other people's pictures. All these heroes that you asked me about, I have I have a number of Walter's pictures hanging at home. I have uh, all the great old life photographers, Alfred Eisenstadt, Karl Meindans, Dimitri Kessel, uh, George Silk, Ralph Morse, all these people that were heroes of mine when I was a kid. I collect their photographs and I hang them. The only picture that hangs in my house of mine is the uh, Ollie Williams picture, which I have a print that's, I think, 40 inches square, and I hang it as a diamond shape. It is unquestionably the best picture I've ever taken, uh, even though it's not my best known, and it's my favorite picture for sure. 
Well, I have stopped. I'm making movies. I'm a filmmaker. I stopped really in the mid-90s, and I, I don't do any, any still photography at all. Uh, having said that, I, when I turned 62 years old, which in New York makes you a senior citizen, in 2000, 2005, I pitched an idea to Sports Illustrated about going back to all my favorite events and spending a year revisiting my youth. Uh, Churchill Downs on Derby Day, uh, uh, you know, the World Series, the Super Bowl, the NCAA, the Final Four, uh, the Masters Golf Tournament, and I had a great time doing it. So I do think when I'm 75, I'm gonna try to go back and do one more, I'm going to call it the Senior Citizens Tour. Well, I've done a bunch of short films. I've done, I've just completed an HBO documentary which will air in, in the spring on, on, of all subjects, blind photographers. I did an HBO documentary called Portraits of a Lady, which was 25 artists, including some very famous ones. Aaron Sheckler, who painted the official portrait of John Kennedy, was one. Uh, and the subject that they painted was Sandra Day O'Connor. And that film was on the short list for an Academy Award. I've got a short film this year called The Perfect Game, written by my old Sports Illustrated colleague Frank DeFord and actually starring Frank DeFord and a great actor named Kevin Conway and it's in it's certainly in the mix for hopefully I would love to see at least at least it get a nomination for an Academy Award so they're a little hard the short film market is not really very big but I love making them my documentaries the last two as I say were HBO I've directed two feature films This space is, is it's a dream for photography. The Annenberg space, I, it's beyond anything I imagined. And I watched it being built, and I still couldn't quite get just how magnificent it's going to be. And, and the, uh, the exhibition that they've put together here is absolutely, it'll be the thrill of my, my career, I think, when it's, uh, you know, <laughs> when it's over, uh, I'm going to really miss it, because I've certainly never been... And I've never had my pictures displayed as well as they are here and given the kind of just first class uh, opportunity that this show presents. Not only to me and to Walter, but I think what it's done is it's really raised the bar for sports photography and sports photographers in a wonderful way. And it'll hopefully give the next generation of sports photographers something to shoot for.